is cleansed and the guilt of it is taken away. And the thing that the Lord showed us that I just love is he removes the stigma of sin. Because a lot of people can go to God and say, Father, forgive me. And he does. And they go, oh, thank you. I, I'm forgiven. Then they got to go to the second point. Now they got to forgive themselves. And that's where a lot of people struggle, is forgiving yeah. themselves. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Right? Well, so, yeah, sin is plural and singular. Yeah. Jesus became sin. He identified it yeah. so that we could be the righteousness of God. A absolutely. And, and when the other part comes, the secondary, as you said, that's dealing with the soul shrimp. It's yeah. working out your wounds. There you go. So so then he so then we get up our we finally realize, oh, okay, I gotta forgive myself. It's the right thing to do. And then we do mirror ministry, right? Everybody that's been through court of heaven knows about mirror ministry. We go to the mirror, we look the person in the eye that's in the mirror, and we tell them the truth. You are forgiven. You are the anointed of God. You are for you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You you carry no guilt, you carry no shame because he took it all away. That's mirror ministry. Okay, so then we forgive ourselves. God forgave me, I forgave myself. But then what do most people carry? They carry the stigma of sin. And Satan will come along and say, who do you think you are? You think you're all so righteous and holy and you're just walking out there like you're all that, like some kind of priest or something like that after what you did? So, well, but God forgave me, I forgave myself. Yeah, but who do you think you are? That's the stigma of sin that the enemy would try to put back upon us and we're still carrying that somewhere in us. Yeah, I am forgiven, but I did do is it such and such. He takes it all away. All of it is gone. And then I was just reading in my journal, and Lord impressed on me, I was reading a journal from last year, and it said, um, it said, uh, you need to walk like it, you need to act like it, and you need to talk like it. That you are forgiven. And that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You need to act like it, talk like it, think like it, and walk like it. You are not that sinner who did that stuff. That is a person that is dead. And you are a new creature in Christ Jesus, created for good works that you might walk in them. And so you need to, you need to get that very clear in your head. All right, forgiveness. Uh, annul. Uh, no remembrance of sin, guilty conscience, yeah, constant fear of retribution. Yeah, there was a constant fear of retribution. Any time now, because in the old covenant, he could come along and smack me for what I did. Not in Jesus. Much of the ceremonial law, if you broke those ceremonial laws, you would be banished. Just, you're out of here. You broke that law, you're out of here. Just banished. Jesus said, I will never abandon you. I will never leave you. If we keep the uh, keeping the Torah, do you think it would be work? If you've read the, the Leviticus, do you think it would be work to do all of that stuff? And, and then you had to have sacrifices for the things you did wrong that you didn't know were wrong. <laughs> all of a sudden, you, 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 it's the sin of ignorance. There was actually a sacrifice for the sin of ignorance for things you didn't know were wrong, but you did it. Now you've got to do a sacrifice for it. So thank God for this effortless grace. Jesus said, come to me. all." Of, when he said, come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He was talking right there to those Hebrew men and women saying, are you weary and heavy laden? And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I wake up in the morning. i got to do these prayers. If you sneeze, you've got to do a prayer. Seriously, you you sneeze, you got to do a prayer. Oh, you forgot to pray that prayer. You sneezed and didn't pray that prayer. Now you need to repent and go to bed. And then you got to go sacrifice. Go get four doves and a couple of pigeons because you sneezed and didn't say a prayer. He said, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's they really were worn good. out. They were worn out. Yeah, that's really good. Um, we, we are so blessed to be here together in unity at the Trinity Valley Ecclesia because there are lots of places all around the whole valley this morning. And there, there are, as Stephen would put it, they are taking their bulls to the sacrifice and then running back and getting another bull. And taking it to the sacrifice and running back and get, uh, let's get back in line. 
so we can sacrifice something again to the Lord that we may be right. But we are right in Him. Absolutely. Oh, right now. Done. 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 All you are weary and heavy laden, you're trying to do religion. I I'm telling you what, uh, uh, like I said, the, the Buddhism that I was involved with, man alive, when you start adding it, you need to this, you need to that, and you got to do the other things, and you need to do this, you know, pretty soon, you're worn out trying to keep up to make. Well, of course, in Buddhism, there is no God. But trying to get perfect, you're worn out trying to be perfect. And then you realize how imperfect you are, because you can't be perfect. <laughs> and one of the goals was, one of the goals of Buddhism was to re re remove all desire. I'm telling you what, about lunchtime, I had desire. And I could not get over it, no matter how hard I tried. This body needed food. But that was what religion will do to us. And that's what they were suffering under. And that's why Jesus said, I will give you rest. Oh, what the relief it is. Um, so obligation, scrutiny of every aspect of your life. Every aspect of your life was being scrutinized. To be, to be, oh, you better not this, you better not that. You got to have, your, you know, your tassels are too long or your tassels are too short, you know. On, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's what he was telling them. And he's the one that wrote the Ten Commandments. The Torah demanded works, and the law was written on stone tablets. Here are stone tablets, hard and cold. Boom, black and white. There's the law. You've got to keep these. And they did it out of obligation. The whole religious experience was done out of a sense of obligation. Or fear, deep fear, because if I get out of line just a little bit, boom, he's going to drop the hammer on me. And I've seen all these people get stoned to death. I don't want to get stoned to death. I've seen people banished. I don't want to get banished. So there's a constant fear and, and, and being obligated to fulfill all of these rules and regulations. And these people were worn out. Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Our fulfillment of the commandments is done out of love. We keep them. You know why, you know why I don't steal from people? Because I love people. I wouldn't want to take anything from them. I love them. You know, I, I would never even think about murdering somebody because I love people. I wouldn't do that. We keep the Ten Commandments not out of obligation. We keep them out of love. It's a joy. It's a relief. We, it, there, there's no uh, sense of obligation. It's something that comes very naturally because love is very natural. But there are those among the body of Christ right now, we ran into many of them actually, uh, who want to go back to the law. They want to go. Uh, now, I love our Hebrew roots. I love the. I love reading Hebrew. I love knowing about the story of our Hebrew roots, about Abraham and Noah. And Noah. I love all of our Hebrew roots. That's our life. That's our family now. We're a part of that family. I love that family, and I love hearing the history of that family, and I, and I love reading the language of that family. I love it. But here's the fact of the matter: is that whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at one point becomes guilty of breaking the law. You can sit there and say, well, you know, and I, 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 don't, I, I know this is going to be a little harsh, but it's a fact. If you sit there and say that I'm going to take the Nazarite vow, for example, then you're going to have to take the whole vow. If you sit there and say, I'm not going to eat pork, then you've got to keep the whole law. Where does it stop? You can't sit there and pick and choose and say, well, I want to, I'm going to keep this much of the law. I, I'm going to keep this much of the law. But you're going to break half of the other part of the law, of the ceremonial and sacrificial and civil, and you're going to, you, if you're, where does it stop? You cannot sit there and say, I'm going to, I'm going to become this part Jewish, uh, or like I think I shared, you know, I love the, the kippah and, and, you know, the tali. I love those things. I love them. They're, they're awesome. And we've got tassels, and I love them. But those tassels, and the talit, and that, that kippah, does not make God love me more than he already does. He doesn't sit there and look down and say, oh, he's wearing the talit. Give him 10 brownie points. You know, now somehow you have achieved a, a 
placed higher into the love of the Lord because you did something. Some ceremony or some piece of garment, you did that, that when you have the mindset that that is going to and make him love you more, it's not going to work. Right. It's not going to make him love you any more right. than he already does. Yeah. Now, I love to wear the tallit. I love to wear it because it's fun. I love to wear the tallit because it's, uh, it reminds me of just prayer. It's just personal. I love it. I love the way it looks. But I'm not going to sit there and embrace the entire old covenant rules and regulations and laws and ceremonies and statutes. And where does this? You break one of them. You broke them all. So as much as I, 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 I love and appreciate our, some of our brothers and sisters who are really leaning in to the ritual side of our Hebrew roots, I love them, I bless them, but I'm going to tell you something. He said, when you get worn out, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy, laden, I'll give you some rest. Because we can't do it. Nobody could. No one could. So we have to face this reality. Now, like I said, I love I love wearing the tallit, and, and I may even wear the tassels. I think it's cool because it reminds me of prayer. But I'm not going to step into the religious aspect of it and make it a religious thing. And I'm certainly not going to put it on to put myself out there now as more holy than you because I'm wearing it. Not going to do that. You break one of these rules, you broke them all. You know, a young man joined a certain faith, and he said to me, I'm not going to eat pork anymore. I said, oh, that's great. Well, we're going to have uh, shrimp on the barbie this weekend. You know, would you come over? Oh, yeah, I love shrimp. No. If you're not going to eat pork, it doesn't stop there. That's only one of the unclean animals. That's just one. There's a whole bunch of them, all shellfish. You can't eat that. And then it goes on from there. You can't eat rabbit. You know, you cannot eat those things. So where does it stop? That's why Jesus said, these people are worn out. Can you imagine what Peter thought when the, when the, um, the thing was dropped down to him? Like that, that's that's twice that he brought that up and the Lord's like, Peter, and the, and the, um, and the tapestry. Like he was, he was, he was nutted up. He could not he figure it out. Like, he was shocked. Yeah. I never let anything like that come into my mouth. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Or, or, you know, not to offend anyone, but, you know, when I started in this thing, uh, in this faith journey, you know, it's like, you don't touch one. You know, you just, believers don't do that. You know? And then I met these believers that were all having wine. And I was like, I, I don't get it. But I was under a law. I was under a rule. I was under a mandate. Right. Which has nothing to do with righteousness that comes from the heart. Don't go through three or four bottles of it, but just I'm just saying. Um, there are a total, there are a total of 613 laws. 613 laws. And you gotta know every one of them. 365 of those laws are negative. In other words, it's a, you, you do this, boom, this negative thing's gonna happen to you. 248 of them were positive. If you do this, you get this positive result. So 365 negative, 248, and it's it's uh, said that there are 248 uh, major organs or bones in the body. 248. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm not a doctor. Uh, I just saw it. And there's 365 days in a year. Exactly. So, uh, so in, so there, so some of the positive ones. Like, like, for example, one of the positive ones is, is uh, Shabbat, is Saturday. If, if you keep the Sabbath, you'll, you keep it to rest. So that's positive. So there was 365 negative, 248 were positive. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For, through, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. I have, we have been set free from the law of sin and death. We now are in the spirit of life. Well, then we get these guys, these Galatians. And he says, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. This is the only thing I want to find out from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law 
or by hearing with faith? Did you get did you get this by what you did or what you believe? And are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit, you're now going to be perfected by the flesh? You're going to go do things to make God love you more, to make you more holy. Paul was really blunt with the Galatians. He was like, he was like, guys, what are you doing? We started with freedom, liberty. We were set free from religion, and you want to go back into it again? He said, that, that's, look, the fact of the matter is, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Galatians 5, he has set us free. And that's why he said some of the Hebrews, some of the Jews, they came to spy out their freedom. Because they're all sitting there in the total bondage. You know, they've got the garments on, they've got the, 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 uh, the um, phylacteries. There you go. Thank you. they got the phylacteries going on. they, they got all this stuff. And, 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 and here's the Jews, here's the Christians over there. No, 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 no. Jesus is Lord. And they're like, this is weird. Because you guys are like free. And we're over here in bondage. And he said, so Jesus has come to set us free. So let's don't go back into bondage, no matter how hard people would want to pull us back in. He said, I will put my laws into your heart. So I'm not going to put them on stone. I'm going to put them in your heart. So what portion of the Torah are we held accountable for? My opinion is the moral law. He's, when, he, when he said, thou shalt not steal, he still means it. When he said, thou shalt not commit murder, he still means it. When he said, uh, don't lie, he still means it. I believe that these laws are a part of our DNA. I, I believe they're really lit, written into our DNA. Every human being has them written into their DNA. And they're either in agreement with them or they're in violation of them. They're still stealing. They're killing. They're uh, uh, wanting what other people have so bad that they'll do anything to go get it. I think it's written into our DNA to know that it's wrong. And I think when Cheryl had that young man... Um, that uh, she corrected on uh, using the Lord's name in vain, he, he was shocked. But I also think, as she tells the story, there was a certain part of him that went, oh, that, that doesn't feel good. That doesn't feel good. Because it's written into our DNA. Don't take the name of the Lord in vain. We'll get into more of that soon. All right, so, so, you're, so you're not saying that we have to keep those for our salvation. Not for you're salvation. just out of all the laws they have. Those are the ones we should still be following. We're, yes, we're but we're doing, doing we're following these laws because that's what love does. That's what love does. Because they're good for us. They're good for us. And, what, and, and we know it, and we like it. It feels good. I like doing the right thing. I like doing the right thing. I like not stealing. <laughs> I like honoring my mother and father. I like those things. And I'm doing them because love is the motivator of the reason why I'm doing them. All right, just a couple more, and we will be done for today. So there are three ceremonies that we do keep because we're his disciples and because we love him. There's three things he shared with us. One was washing one another's feet, and we've done that a time or two here in this fellowship. Washing one another's feet, getting water baptized, and communion. So there's three ceremonial things, if you want to call that, that we do. But why do we do that? Why do you wash someone's feet? Because you love them. <laughs> why, why do we get water baptized? Because he said, I would really like you to do this as disciples of mine. Identification. Ident we're identifying with him. So, but all of these things, we do them because we do them out of love. But we certainly don't do it out of obligation. Uh, uh, you know, there's a certain group that believe unless you're water baptized in their fellowship, there's 33,000 denominations, like we said, and one of those denominations says, if you're not water baptized in their fellowship, you ain't going to heaven. Well, I got a problem with that. For example, the thief that was on the cross with Jesus, when he turned to him, Jesus and said, when you come into, your, into paradise in your kingdom, can I come too? And he said, absolutely. Did he get water baptized? Was, did he speak in tongues? No. <laughs> All he, he didn't wash anybody's feet. He didn't take communion. He was, he was with communion. But he ended up in heaven. 
So it's not rules and regulations that get us in there. All right. Uh, one other. Uh, okay. Two two things and we're done. Uh, so uh, I, I do I do I'm really impressed with the feasts. I, I'm really impressed, and part of the reason why I'm impressed with these God's calendar is because what I've noticed is this seems to be important to Him because things tend to happen. You see things happening on these feast days. And these feast days um, are called um, appointments. The, the, the Hebrew word is like appointment. I have an appointment with you. So I, I, on this, we're going to get together at Pat. We are going to get together on Passover, and we're going to celebrate. We're going to get together uh, for the Feast of Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, Shavuot, Pentecost, Rosh Hashanah, the New Year, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, and Sukkot, Tabernacles. Tabernacles. When does Tabernacles begin? Right now. Tonight. Oh, is it tonight? Yeah. Tabernacles will begin at tonight officially. And again, we're not getting religious about it, but I'm just saying that at uh, 713, we switch into, we go into Sukkot. You can camp in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> I have not done that yet. Not camped out for a week. I thought that was interesting on the Chosen where they showed them making those tabernacles or those um, booths. Remember they were building it and they were putting the grass up, the palms up there. Absolutely. So one of the things I guess that we might keep in mind here is these are, these are uh, uh, holidays, if you will, where we meet with the Father. So it's like us, like he's saying, like, do we get weird religious about Thanksgiving? You know, I don't know if it gets real religious, but we just get a bunch of family together and we eat a bunch of food, you know, because that's what family does, and it's fun. Well, that's kind of what these are. These are specific times for us to stop and remember. Stop and remember what he's done for us. And so he, because human beings have a, we, we tend to forget. We, we tend to forget. And so by having these feasts, it's an opportunity to remember, oh, yeah. On Pentecost, that's when he gave the Torah to Moses on the, uh, up there, when the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt, and, and uh, he gave them he gave them the law, and we remember that, and that's when the Holy Spirit fell, and, and the birthing of the uh, ecclesia. So uh, again, this is just I, I've just experienced in my life a real connection to this calendar. So I kind of watched that. Now, on that same note, let me say this, is that over the years, myself and others have gone, on this date, because it's on the Jewish calendar, this is certainly going to happen, and it didn't. <laughs> and it did not, nothing happened. Nothing unique about it, whatsoever. And a lot of us have come and gone with no noticeable change that we can perceive. So we don't get weird about it or religious about it, but I kind of keep an eye on it. And this year, I got to tell you, when we hit uh, uh, Rosh Hashanah, uh, and remember, hot means the, so the, 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 new, the beginning of the year, when we hit Rosh Hashanah this year, something definitely changed. That's good. Something really did change. 5783. 5783. So, 5783. So, the, the, the way the Hebrews come up with that, the Jewish people come up with that day, 5783. That's, that is dating back to the day that Adam was created. So Adam was, that's, so that's where they get the date from, 5783. There, there are several problems with that date, 5783. One of the problems is that uh, one rabbi made a change to the calendar and lost, uh, I think it was like 200 years or something like that. So is it 5783 or is it 60,000, 6,000 something or other? Take me that guy. <laughs> We, we can't pin this down. Because some people are trying to take that 5783 and make assumptions on that. You can't do it. Because there's at least two errors in the dating. But the point is, for the Hebrew brothers and sisters, they consider that to be the day Adam was created. Which, in my estimation, is the beginning of God's redemptive relationship with humanity. So there could have been dinosaurs. There could have been Neanderthals. There could have been billions of years, but but when he started his um, his redemptive relationship with humanity, he did it with Adam and Eve. That began the that began the redemptive relationship with Father and human beings. There could have been all sorts of things before then. All right.
So do we follow any laws today in the, under the new covenant? Are there any laws we follow? Well, there really are. There's the law of God, Romans 7, 25. There's the law of liberty. There's the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus. There's the law of faith. There's the royal law, which is love. This is my commandment, that you love one another. He gave us one commandment. Jesus came, gave us one commandment. This is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. And I'm going to say this again. I'm going to say this too. And again, I'm sorry if it hurts anyone's feelings. But you cannot love people you're not with. You can't. How do you love? How do you fulfill this commandment if you're not with his people? You can't. You can't. How, he said, this is my commandment that you love one another. But if you're not with one another, how can you love them? So those, I think we're coming into an hour and we're in that time right now. And we're going to leave this, we're not going to edit this out. If you believe you can live your life as a lone ranger, a hermit Christian, you live in a her, as a hermit in your Christianity, in your faith walk, isolated from brothers and sisters, how can you fulfill this commandment? I think if there was ever a time as we see the day drawing near that we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves one with another, and I would encourage you, find a family to be a part of, wherever it's at. Find a family. Bring your love. Bring your gift. Bring your talent. Bring what you have to give. But come and share it in the context of a family. And I really believe that, uh, I, I'm telling you, I, I'm really feeling the anointing on this, guys. Father is pleading. If you've ever lived your life and you thought you could live it as a hermit uh, in some kind of monastic relationship with God, you're incorrect. You need to be in a family. He takes the lonely and puts them in families. We need to be in a family. I cannot fulfill this commandment sitting alone in my home or my apartment. I cannot fulfill this commandment. I need to be with others so that I can love them as he has loved me. Yes, the body of Christ. It's the body of Christ. It's time to come together. It's the, 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 uh, that whole, the whole Lone Ranger, do whatever, you, you know, do it in isolation. That's, that, that's, that's over with. we got to get together with one another. And I really feel Father is being very, very clear about this. And so uh, we're going to be more pointed as we go into our study. As we go into our study, we're going to talk about some of these things. And, and, and I'm just giving you a fair warning. I know some people are going to be uncomfortable. And that's all right. Because we're going to talk about the truth as the Father has been revealing it. And for you to take and process with the Holy Spirit as he applies it to your heart. But some of the things we're going to share, I know, are going to cause some people to be uncomfortable because they're comfortable doing their opinion. In my opinion, the way I see it, well, that's not the way I look at it. Well, this is my interpretation. Well, it's time for us to come out of that pride and become a part of a family a good word right that learns to work with one another, love one another, care about one another, learn, and, and bring what, bring, you have a gift that we need. The body needs, whether it's here or somewhere else, find somewhere to belong. It has to change. I, I really believe Father has drawn a line in the sand last, uh, you know, on the 26th, he drew a line in the sand, things are changing. He's, I believe he's going to be more pointed, if you will, with us about the way we conduct our business. It's just the truth. Because what did he say? The truth will set you free. He wants us free. He wants us free. And so sometimes, it, it, sometimes the truth hurts. It just does. It only hurts because, like uh, Finlon, when in the 1500s, uh, uh, Archbishop Finlon said, it can only hurt in the places where your flesh is still alive. That's good. This coming Sunday, October 19th, we'll begin our study of the Ten Commandments with the first commandment, Thou shalt have no other God before me. Look forward to seeing you. Lord bless you.